and we'll see where you know where they can take this. Super chat, thank you, Kim Coulter. They uh, the, the Texas Tech problems. Kim's a, a Texas Tech alum. Goes to a lot of the home games. I know he flies in to go see him. He's very supportive of what we do uh, as a show. Of course, the TexasBeefHouse.com gift card. Texas Tech's problems are way capitalized, way bigger uh, at Tech than just Shuck. We have no we have no pass rush, and our offensive scheme is vanilla. That right there, last year, remember, they had Tyree Wilson, who was a freak show himself. I used that twice in, in five minutes, but was just – he was an NFL guy. Uh, the, the vanilla scheme on offense is interesting to me with Kitley. Is that because of who they have at quarterback, or is that because of what they have the quarterback to play with? I mean – Because that's never something I've ever thought about a Kitley offense being described by a fan, an alum, and a booster, and a donor – in Kim Coulter. Well, maybe their playmakers aren't as good as they thought they That's were That's what I was be. saying. I mean, yeah. yeah. I mean, I think, you know, I, I think you knew what Tyler Shuck was. I think you guys, I think they know what they, but Baron Morton is and, and what they think he can be. But, you know, maybe, you know, yeah. Tyree Wilson makes a defense that, you know, is pretty average, really good because he's at a position where he is many times, it's just about making, you know, six good plays in a game, he can affect it. Right, he doesn't have to be like a, a quarterback. Most of the time, if your quarterback only makes six good plays out of the ones he runs, you're gonna say we need to bench you. But a defensive end, really, like Tyree Wilson, if he makes two sacks, a tackle for loss, and then just wrecks something down the field and causes incompletion, he's had a great game, right? Because it's a different deal. So you can make a defense look a lot better when you are that plus of a player. Uh, Roy Melton, uh, when. Baron Morton plays. It seems the playbook opens up, and we take more shots and risk. Chris Cobb. Uh, no, it's not from Chris. Kim Coulter. That's, by the way, what you asked, Smokey, is a very fair question. Wes Foster. Baron Morton needs to start. So that's interesting because the, the momentum they had, Craig, with Tyler Shuck to end the year, he was healthy. He looked good. I, I know Morton's good, but I thought this would be Shuck's, Shuck's job unless just all hell broke loose, and it appears as it's close to being all hell broke, breaking loose. Uh, yeah, I don't know if we're at that point, but you definitely sense the pressure rising. Uh, I don't know about all hell breaking loose. Um, you, you know, that would be all hell breaking loose to me would be like, you know, coaches on the hot seat and losing things like that. at West Virginia? Huh? Would it be losing this week to open up the Big 12 at West Virginia? I mean, I think. Um, yeah, possibly. Um, you know, all hell could break loose in that regard. I, I just think of that as so much more dramatic. You know, I, I think these are sure. some, some fixable issues. I think all hell breaking loose. I'm like, people are getting Zach Kitley's on his way out, and and it's not that dire. I don't want to make it sound like it's it's worse than it is. But yeah, they've definitely got some question marks. They definitely have some issues that they need to clean up and take care of. And I hear the calls for Baron Morton, and I've seen the the comments and the talk about how you know the offense does seem to operate a bit smoother, more wide open with him. I don't know what to point to in that regard. Um, but, you know, I think Tyler Shuck is a victim of some of the hype. Uh, the fact that you had there at the end of the year, what was it like the graphic of like he's 7-1 and one in games he started, but he's missed all these games because of injury. And so that leads you into like, well, shoot, if he's healthy yep. and they got all these guys coming back, well, by God, like they're going to be on fire. And then they come out and they're, they're not uh, on fire. And like they're still putting up points. Um, but it's just not the way that you thought that they would be able to do that uh, with Taj Brooks and all the various weapons that they have. So, you know, turnovers have been problematic too. I mean, like that Oregon game, you know, that's a game they almost win. Um, you know, that's a game that if he doesn't throw an interception late, they very well go down there. And that's a different story when all was said and done. Wyoming, that was double overtime. Yep. So, you know, yes, it's not been as good as you expected. Yes, they might have a better quarterback at backup than they do at the starter. I think that still remains to be seen, but I understand why there's that conversation. But I don't think it's like press the panic button just yet because the two losses they have, while you know one of those was certainly unexpected, it's this close, right? It's not you're getting blown out. It's literally overtime and then and then another game uh, with Oregon where it went down to the very wire and then you know can't take too much from Tarleton State. But look, they're not quite as good as I thought that they would be. I don't think they're as good as most people thought they would be. I think that also, though, is what happens when you kind of operate a hype machine throughout the offseason and so much is promoted, 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 and then you get out there and it's time to play ball and it's not quite where you thought. And so that leads to maybe some unreal or too high expectations being brought down to earth a little bit. I think that's kind of where tech is, but if they go and they start off one and three this weekend, then by all means, bring all those comments back and let's talk next week about 
you know, what really is about to break loose because that would be an unforeseen uh, first month uh, to start the season. Kim Coulter was mentioning the no, no pressure. Defensive ends, I looked at the yeah. NCAA stats. You have some schools that have 13 or 14 sacks. Texas Tech has six. It's like in the a tie for 63rd with about 30 teams. Again, not enough games have been played to get away from a lot of t- people with six sacks. So that's one of the issues as far as pressure. So there's one thing and, that I looked up on NCAA.com. Yeah, and I mean, here's the thing is, you know, I give credit to them for sticking in these ball games or being in close games. But at the same time, they're also allowing those teams to be in those close games and to get the final score on them, uh, you know, in the case of uh, Wyoming and also uh, Oregon. So, yeah, you can score 30-plus, but if you're giving up 30-plus, then that's problematic, and that's where they find themselves. They are in a pickle. Make no bones about it. Um, but it's still early enough to correct course. But they do need to figure out, like, how – how, how do they operate moving forward at quarterback? That is going to be very curious if Tyler Shuck continues to struggle um, at inopportune times. And Baron Morton, um, you know, obviously has a lot of fans because he's got a great skill set. Adam Vulture, Shuck needs to throw the damn ball away, hand the ball to the running back, run the ball himself more. Um, and then there's Katie Rader, who's a huge Texas Tech fan. Uh, where, where did it go? Uh, no stud wideouts. Uh, that, what happened to that big, tall, physical drink of water that I thought, was it Bradley or something Jaren like that? I, I mean, I, I'd throw him the damn ball about every other time I threw the ball, but again, I know that means they could cover him too. So there's a lot of talk. We appreciate the feedback on the chat room today on all of what we've brought up so far on this show. We'll have Craig's off the radar.